So coming out now for the bronze medal in the recurve mixed team competition, the two losing semi-finalists, Takia versus Spain. Let's go down to the shooting line to meet the athletes. On target number one, representing Turkey, Eski Başaran. Mete Gazos. On target number two, representing Spain, Elia Canales. Miguel Alvarinho Garcia. And the final for this match is Darlene Churchill. Tasty little lineup for this bronze medal match. Spain lining up with uh, Elia Canales, uh, the 21 year old, who took gold at the European Grand Prix in Lisho. Uh, just a few days ago, she teams up with Miguel Alvarino Garcia, the silver medalist from the Highland Archery World Cup final last year. Similar story on the Takia side of the shooting line. Ezi Basaran collecting silver at the Spring Arrows here in Antalya just a couple of weeks back, teaming up with the Olympic champion, Mete Gazos. Tough one to call. Home advantage play a, ch uh, uh, a factor here? Uh, uh, perhaps. I mean... Uh they have been shooting at this venue or at least in this city for a very long time but then you would expect that home advantage to show in the individual matches as well uh, and that really hasn't been the case so we'll see how uh, how they fare here as you can see spain starting the match off and uh Alvarino garcia straight into the 10. Hey. Low right from uh, Elia Canales. Let's look at our first sighting of the host nation team and Ezi Basaran. A little bit high there, but she gives her side a bit of a swirl. Um, I, I don't know if that was like a mental couple of clicks for the side or if she hopes that's enough but if that really was a good shot and uh, it hit there high up in the seven and she might want to move her side a bit more but we'll see maybe she did exactly what she needed to do well this is in spain's hands now two tens and they've got the first set points And Alvarino has, uh, I, I want to say, made a comeback over the last couple of years. Um, he was really good, like 2014 to 2016. And he kind of fell away a little bit. And then over the last couple of years, he's just been top level uh, archer again. So uh, it's, uh, it's cool to see him uh, in yet another finals uh, match or on yet another finals venue. So again, adjusting her side a little bit more. Um, the group is good, but just not centered yet. So uh, if she has adjusted her side enough now, then uh, they might get back into this match in the next set. Um, this set is at least going to Spain. Called a nine in venue, gone for a measure that last arrow, but 34 or 35, not enough. And uh, Spain have come up with blocks hard and fast here. A 37 from them, uh, a little bit of a straight eight perhaps from Canales, but more than enough. Yeah, but she shot the arrow, went off the line, got the feedback, and adjusted, and, and shot an X on the seventh or the second. So I think she's uh, she's going to be okay. Well, lots of support for the host nation. You can hear that crowd cheering on uh, Gazos and Bataran. This is the newest of the uh, disciplines. Uh, uh, so it appeared at the Olympic Games for the very first time in Tokyo. Yeah, mixed team is a relatively new 
concept, I would say. It's, uh, it's been around for some years, but uh, for the first time it's an Olympic event in Tokyo. Uh, and it will be returning in Paris as well, so uh, yeah, the, the teams will be looking to get a really st strong mixed team to Paris as well. I think you can guess where they're all from. Trailing by two points to Kier in this bronze medal playoff against Spain. So they will shoot first in the second set and they've definitely still got the crowd behind them. Funny detail here is that they have matching bows in the Turkish colors, so uh, red and white, as are their shirts. Seven. So again, in that same little group, um, yeah, I was going to say, move your sight a little bit more and just keep shooting good shots. Um, she's getting some, uh, some nice tips from Goktuk. Uh, seems like he's telling her to stay calm and do her thing. Ten. And it's so nice to have a teammate that can back it up with a, a really good 10 so that not all is lost. Very long hold for him. But seems physically strong enough to get away with it but it does mean that in the team they ha only have 80 seconds for four arrows which comes down to 20 seconds per arrow and I think he might have used a couple of seconds more than 20 over there yeah they may have used up the time but uh, they put themselves in a commanding position here a couple of very important arrows here from Basaran and Gazos. A little bit of a wobble. But actually the best arrow of her so far. Seeing just slightly longer holds, are you thinking that perhaps the wind has picked up a little bit? That was what I was thinking, yeah. That it seems like the flags in the back are wavering a little bit more. Um, maybe the longer holds are... 2-2, two, two, the wind, and yeah, that was right before the buzzer. I, I think maybe their bow and, and therefore their sides being blown around a bit more and there's a bit more hesitation before uh, shooting your shot. But Very tight grouping there. Just a single point dropped. The first three arrows for Spain. Oh my goodness me, that's gone way off. Out into the five. Uh, this has got to be wind related, hasn't it? Yeah, or time related because she shot the arrow right before the, the buzzer went. So, like I said, in the after the first uh, arrow of their shot or uh, of their team, they didn't have that much time left. But they're being told something by the judge yeah. now. I mean, everything looks to be okay. Is it just a little bit of a reminder? Did uh, Canales jump on the line too early? Perhaps? Yeah, maybe it's something like that where they're getting a, a reminder or a warning, like, watch your feet, uh, don't get onto the line too fast. But like I was saying, uh, Miguel, he used a lot of time in his first arrow, uh, and that just eats up those 80 seconds that you have for the four arrows. Well, they were both against the clock, though, in that one, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, and Meta uh, shot an eight, which is not really his standard, but okay. Um, but Ilya uh, put it out in the five ring when she needed a six to tie the set. So a bit of a costly arrow there. She did manage to pull through the clicker, so I think it was maybe just a, a, yeah, a bit of a rushed shot because of the lack of time. 
Well, it does mean that Takia are right back in the match. It goes into set number three. I do really enjoy her shot and her uh, her form. It's really solid and, and easy to you know e easy to watch. There's a bit more movement here on uh, Basaran's <coughs> shot compared to uh, Canales. I think there might be a little bit more wind than meets the eye here. Did he seemed surprised with why it went so far left. Inside uh, the last 10 seconds, 35 matching the score they got in the last set. So that 10 puts Meta in a spot where he can get a tied score by shooting another one of those tens. So it was a very important error there by Passeran. He's gone 10 9, 10 8. Shot a 7 with his first arrow. Nine. It's only a 9. And that is a 34. And uh, look, this match is um, by no means over. But I think what we saw there is the wind changing, the wind conditions changing. It's not a solid, um, steady wind from one direction or the other. I think for the last couple of hours from Spain especially, there was almost no wind. Yeah, I think, uh, like you say, it's the intensity of the wind is just uh, changing a bit. So the direction doesn't change, but it's from arrow to arrow, it's going to be more or less wind. Um, and there, I think that's also the reason that Miguel went to the right, even though the wind is coming from the right. It probably just the wind just decreased and then um, he didn't adjust accordingly. But um, yeah, it, it's one of those things that if you're shooting next to the sea, you're going to have wind to deal with. And it's surprising that it's taken us to the third live session of uh, this Hyundai Archery World Cup in Antalya to be talking about the wind because it really hasn't played a factor this week. Yeah, not really so far at least. And uh, I've had some uh, elimination matches that I've heard that were a little bit windy, but nothing to the extent that it can be windy in the Antalya. Four two to Spain in this bronze medal match and uh, Ezi Basaran of Turkey steps up to the line to begin the fourth set. Seems to have found her uh, her rhythm and her shot now. Started off left uh, left high actually, and uh, slowly adjusted her side, and now she is pretty much centered. A longer hold by Meta, so there might be some wind on his bow. Gets it into the middle, anyways. Meta seems a bit more nervous than what I'm used to seeing from him. He's not, I'm not saying he looks nervous at all, but uh, just more than, than, than what we've seen in previous years. So 
I think maybe feeling the pressure of shooting in his home country or feeling the pressure of the Olympic Games coming up again and being the defending champion. But I'm getting a different vibe from him in this uh, finals venue. It has to be said that this is pretty much the first thing I've seen of him. So uh, it might just be uh, this moment, like a one take judgment. Well, a 10 and 9 through the first rotation puts Takia in the driving seat here. Nine. Another 9 and a 10, and they've got this set. That's the 9. So in Mete Gazos' hands here, a 10 to draw things level and force a shoot off. Ten. Exactly what they did. And we are getting our first shoot off of this session. No, we're not. <laughs> our second shoot off. <laughs> it's been a long weekend, Chef. Don't worry. It has been, yeah. <laughs> so, these arrows, for me, when a set's done, they're, they're kind of dead arrows, right? Uh, yeah, you could consider them dead arrows, but you can also really use them to get some information about the field. So you can uh, use them to just aim in the middle and see how far the arrow strays off, or you can aim off and see how that works. So, so they're very valuable arrows in the sense that you can you can practice and, and gather information from them. Yeah, so uh, we are into a shoot off in this recurve mixed team bronze medal match I'm not entirely sure what I've just seen Spain but Jekyll and Hyde really one moment they were on cracking form and then it was kind of every other set for them yeah it seems like uh, they're struggling to figure out how much the wind is actually doing on the arrows and when it is and when it isn't um, but they are shooting quite a lot of temps as well so they're shooting I feel like either a really good shot or it's going to stray off because of the wind. So that'll be interesting to see in the shoot off. So. Yeah, Takia have clawed their way to this uh, shoot off. It's a good final set from them, a 38. And that is what has put them into this shoot off. Can they maintain that form? As we effectively have a, a mini set here, one arrow per archer, as the target faces are being replaced with clean faces. The archers go for raw score first over two arrows. If they're tied, the winner of this bronze medal match will be the one with the arrow closest to the centre of the target. So just going off of uh, statistics, which is maybe not the best way to decide who is going to win this, but uh, Spain has shot one point more and one ten more than Turkey has. But Turkey have won two shoot-offs on the route to this bronze medal match. So Spain up first with Miguel Alvarino Garcia in the shoot off for the bronze medal. It's a decent nine, but it leaves a lot of room for improvement for the closer to center arrow. So alternating teams between each arrow. Nine. Very similar to the one that. Miguel just shot. Just to remind you, it's it's score first, so the higher score wins. But in the case of a tight score, they look at which arrow is closest to center. So it's really important to shoot a really good arrow now. Well, <laughs> I think that's pretty much impossible to beat, isn't it? Unless Mate Gazos can hit the centre of the target and I think even then Alvarino's nine might be closer than Basaran's. 
Big pressure on this one. And pushed it way out into the eight. So it's a clear win for Spain. Overall, even though they were forced into a shoot-off, you have to say they shot just ever so slightly better.